Welcome to Ticker Talk. I'm Ted Ohashi coming to you today from the offices of Investment Pitch in Vancouver, British Columbia. I'm pleased to have with me today two senior executives from Pure Nickel. Dave McPherson, President and CEO, is with me, as is Dr. John Finley, Chief Geologist. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you, Ted. Dave, let's get right into it. Um, the, the markets are down and, and all small companies seem to be tarred with the same brush, including uh, uh, Pure Nickel. I mean, um, but Pure Nickel has a lot of things going for it that many other companies don't. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the corporate side of things? Uh, I will. And let me just start by acknowledging that the markets aren't a lot of fun. But the one thing I learned early on in life is, is there's very little I can do to control the markets. But I like to think that we've been better at most in managing our way through it, not, notwithstanding what the share price is. You know, we're in a strong cash position today. Our working capital is just a little under $3 million, which compared to my peer group is very strong. We're going to have active projects uh, on the go this summer and fall that we're going to talk about in just a minute or two. And uh, we have some very interesting alliances that um, kind of set us apart from everybody else. And then there's other projects that we think are valuable as assets that uh, we're not going to get into today. I, uh, last time I looked, I mean, y you said you had working capital of $3 million. I mean, your market cap wasn't much different from that. No, that's, that's true. Our market cap is pretty much bang on $3 million, which is a bit surprising because we do have one project today that's going to be funded externally for $3.5 million that we get no credit for. But uh, you know what? That's the way it is, and uh, this too will change. And like I said uh, to a colleague the other day, the market's not going to walk up, tap on the window, and say we're going to turn ourselves on tomorrow. So we need to be ready for that. Right. And, and I think investors do too, because it's, it's companies like yours that I think are going to really come out of the gates when it does turn. Well, that's really our number one objective. I mean, we, we want to be positioned for when the market turns, that we have projects that we've continue to put effort into and that are ready to go and we can demonstrate value. You mentioned that you had some interesting alliances with companies. Um, that leads us naturally into a discussion of the MAN project in Alaska. What, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, the MAN project is a platinum group element, copper, gold, nickel prospect in uh, south central Alaska. And uh, we've had the property since 2007. Uh, we were very fortunate in 2008 to enter into an option to earn in with Etocho Corporation from Japan. And uh, Etocho has been providing all of the exploration uh, expense money since 2008. And so we've been very fortunate in, in that sense. I mean, by the end of this year, they will have invested 25, almost $25 million in that project. Wow. Um, which is significant. Yeah. Uh, we're the operator. We get a management fee for doing that. And I, I like to think that we've got a great relationship with a very solid company, and it's a relationship built on dependability and trust. So, uh, John, here's this company, this Japanese company, spending 25, almost $25 million. What, what is it that they're seeing there? Well, I think uh, both Itochu and ourselves feel that the drilling in 2012, combined with previous year, years drilling, um, has led to the identification of a, a significant uh, zone of mineralization which occurs at the same uh, stratigraphic position in every drill hole. So we know it has some continuity. And we believe that the uh, potential is there for a very large tonnage, bulk mineable nickel copper PG deposit. We're informally calling this the Eureka Zone. It occurs in the Alpha Complex, which is the largest of the five complexes on the Mann property. And as I say, it occurs in the same stratigraphic position in every drill hole where we've encountered it. The zone has been traced over a strike length of about seven kilometers in widely spaced drill holes from last year and previous years. The Alpha Complex as a whole is almost 33 kilometers in length and because of the continuity that we see 
where we have drill intersections, we see the same rock types, we see the same style of mineralization, we see the same grades, we believe that there is the potential to expand that zone of mineralization to the east and west uh, across the entire Alpha complex. So it's still open then? It's open on both ends and 33 kilometers with a 100 to 160 meter thickness is an enormous tonnage of material. Uh, Dave, did you, you look like you wanted to add something there. Well, you know, what, I, what I'm really pleased about in, in terms of what John's talking about is when he starts saying at the same depth and the same kind of rock time after time is we now have a level of predictability about where the min mineralization lies and so it takes, it de-risks the project a little bit which as an executive makes me really happy. John, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, the activity uh, in 2013 on the Man project? Well, our, part, our partner, Itochu, um, would like to see additional drilling in the seven kilometers of strike length where we know the mineralization is. So, so that's sort of infill drilling? That's delineation drilling to start to form the basis for a, a resource estimate. And it's important for them to, to try to establish the, the kinds of um, tonnages of metals that they may see come out of this thing. So the first part of the drill program will focus on exactly that, delineation drilling, where we know the mineralization, where we've already intersected, to fill in some of those gaps and form the basis for a resource estimate. From Pure Nickel's point of view, it's also important to see how big this thing is. Um, we know it, we have it over seven kilometers of strike length. We know that within that seven kilometers, it's, it's, it is extremely continuous at the same stratigraphic level. And so we would like to see how far across the entire zone of alpha it actually goes. So we will be doing a combination of delineation drilling and then stepping out to the east of west and west um, to see how far it actually goes. Um Dave, you've got another really interesting project in Alaska, the salt chuck. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Well, I mean, I'm going to have to kind of tone myself down a bit because we're pretty excited about this project, and I'm going to let John carry most of, it, of the conversation on this. But we did have a very significant discovery last year on Prince of Wales Island on the salt chuck project and uh, almost an ounce per ton of gold in a drill hole, which is exciting for us. And uh, we think this thing has a lot of potential and we're in a planning phase right now and I'm going to let John cover most of the details on that right now. Uh, John, so I, I understand uh, when the work is done uh, on the MAN project, you're going to move the equipment over and, and continue on with the salt chuck, is that right? That's right, Ted. We, salt chuck is a very interesting property in southeastern Alaska. Um, Pure Nickel uh, acquired the property in 2007. Uh, we've never, we didn't work on it <clears throat> excuse me, until last year. The property covers uh, a historic palladium, copper, gold, silver uh, producer. At the time, it was the largest producer of palladium in the United States. We picked it up um, for that reason, to look at the palladium potential of the area. Last year was the first time we've been able to work on the property. We had a 1700 meter drill program and that drill program targeted palladium anomalies in soil samples. So the soil locally is very enriched in palladium. So we set up our drills on these palladium anomalies and we did in fact hit low grade palladium mineralization, but more importantly we hit high-grade gold mineralization. Was that a surprise to you? It was a surprise to us. We were, we were thinking, we were targeting the same type of mineralization at the mine, and instead we got extremely high gold mineralization, which you don't see at the mine. So we were very excited about this, and when I started planning the next phase of drilling, I started looking at the distribution of anomalies, and it occurred to me that there are much better anomalies, gold anomalies on the property. 
So the, where the area where we hit very high grade gold mineralization has a relatively weak gold signature in the soils. So there are much better gold anomalies that have never been drilled. So our plan for 2013 is to go back to the discovery hole where we hit an ounce basically over two and a half meters and see where that goes, to step out on either side and start the process of delineating a resource in that little area. But at the same time, we don't want to ignore all of these other larger, much larger uh, soil anomalies. So part of the program will also be testing bedrock beneath these soil anomalies to look for more mineralization. And I am quite excited about the potential because the soil anomalies, the gold anomalies in soil, form a very coherent, geologically um, interpretable uh, trend. And I feel that there's a real potential for a major zone of mineralization following these gold anomalies. Um, so John, maybe you could focus a little bit uh, and distinguish for us, you know, your short-term objectives and your longer-term objectives at the salt chuck. Yeah, I think we have, um, as you say, both long-term and short-term uh, um, possibilities with this project. As I say, uh, this fall, once we're finished at Man, the drill will move down to Salt Chuck, and we will put it where we have this discovery hole. And the goal there is to quickly establish a resource. The trend of the gold anomalies there is much smaller than this other larger trend I've spoken of. But we think we can uh, uh, quickly delineate a, a small gold resource. And then we have the option of, of going towards production on that kind of smaller scale or moving out to look at the longer or the bigger picture. The trend of the gold anomalies um, that are much higher that we haven't drilled yet uh, is over two kilometers in length. So this could be a very large tonnage zone of gold mineralization. So our short-term goal would be to delineate a small resource in the one zone, and then the longer-term goal is to develop a much larger resource in this trend of gold anomalies. Uh, Dave, anything else you want to tell us about the salt chuck? Well, you know, I think the one thing that I really like about the project is the jurisdiction. I mean, we find Alaska is, is, is really interested in in developing their mining industry so they're, they're they're very helpful when it comes to exploration so the state's very helpful we deal with uh, federal government agencies they've been very helpful the people on the island are anxious for us to be successful they want the jobs and so we've got this project that uh, sits 20 minutes from a town uh, we drive to the drill every day we've been drilling off a gravel road in in a in a community that really wants us to be successful and I, down the road I can see you know lots of opportunity to work with the state municipal level to make this thing go. So Dave just to uh, wrap up our time today uh, is, is there anything else you'd like to add? Well first I want to thank you for the time today Ted. I, I, I think I just you know if anybody can leave with the following messages that would be great. One I, I think we've managed ourselves better than most. We're going to have active gold projects that have got some pretty interesting blue sky potential and we have a little bit of cash and we're as i said we're going to be active this year so um this is an exciting time of the year for us pre pre-program and uh we're looking forward to 2013. well that's great john dave thank you very much for being with me today thank you Tim. thank you ted from the offices of investment pitch in vancouver british columbia i'm ted ohashi <laughs>